Ed Schultz is the commentary right back with you on this Tuesday edition from Washington, D.C. Uh, have you noticed that the mainstream media pays no attention to Gary Johnson, the independent libertarian candidate, and Jill Stein, who's the Green Party candidate? Now, the reason why I'm starting with this today is I find it utterly amazing that they get no conversation other than a quick poll. Is this just a quick poll? Folks, let me tell you something. They are going to have a greater effect in this election than Ralph Nader had in 2000. I mean, there's a, there is going to be a play here in a big way if this uh, lack of enthusiasm continues for Donald Trump among some of the party faithfuls. Uh, I'm, I'm just believing that when you have... Uh, Gary Johnson scoring at 7% in a Quinnipiac poll in Florida and 3% for Jill Stein, you know, th that's not to be discarded. And so the Quinnipiac poll has Trump and Clinton virtually tied at 43. Now, what does that mean? It means it's too close to call. And she's got a four-point lead in Ohio Quinnipiac poll when the others aren't figured in. And so I think the mainstream media is totally missing the entire scope of what could be unfolding in front of the American people. And it's interesting, Trump said today that he thought that the Second Amendment crowd, in other words, the folks that want their gun rights, could end up tripping up Hillary Clinton. And, you know, if those folks get motivated, it's it, you just don't know where it's going to go. Now... Hillary continues this uh, anti-Trump campaign message. Her, every stump speech that she gives is about Trump's not reliable, uh, uh, is what you see is what you get, that there's uh, no other Donald Trump, and uh, he can't be trusted. And can you see him facing a real crisis? Uh, what happens when somebody gets under his skin? You know, Hillary, I, I would respectfully look in the mirror because I know you and your husband have a political hit list. Everybody knows that. Uh, just go ask Senator Nina Turner if she's on the favorable list after supporting Bernie Sanders out of Ohio. Look, the Clintons play hardball like anybody else. And if that's what they apparently think what they have to do to beat Donald Trump. Well, so far, it ain't really working in Florida. I want to go to Mitch Caesar, our great friend, former Florida Democratic Party chair, member of the DNC Executive Council. Mitch, good to have you with us. Thank you, Ed. Great to be with you. What, what do you make of 43-43 Clinton and, and Trump in Florida right now? Well, let's say this. I was happier yesterday before that poll came out today. Um, you know, Florida is the ultimate swing state. It's the biggest swing state with 29 electoral votes, so we're bigger than Ohio. And we're not the swing state for nothing. Uh, I'm frankly surprised because I still would have thought it would have shown her up maybe about four, you know, not one. So I think that shows that this race is razor close. And in talking about what you said a moment ago, I think the libertarian group of governors uh, who are running are probably going to take a little bit more from Trump. But I also think Jill Stein takes almost everything from Clinton. So I think that's what kind of makes this a dead even situation. Okay, let's go to this soundbite. This is Susan Collins, senator from Maine, not real uh, fired up about Trump, says she won't vote for him. I'd have the restraint and the consideration and the judgment and the knowledge to handle those dangerous events with which presidents are inevitably confronted. Now, she goes on to say that it's just not because of the 50 Defense and Homeland Security officials, because she sits on the Intelligence Committee. She made her own decision on this. And worked closely with many of the 50 Intelligence, Defense, and Homeland Security officials who signed that letter. But my decision was my own. It certainly was informed by the many years that I served as the chairman of the Senate Homeland security as well as the regular briefings that I receive now as a member of the Intelligence Committee. All right now I'm calling this officially the Washington drip that <laughs> daily there is someone out of Washington who's already elected or works in Washington that just can't bring themselves to cozying up to Trump. 
Notice you uh, across the country, you don't see anybody in the middle of the country who's against Trump or calling a press conference or making a big uh, national platform out of the fact there's just no way I can do this. In fact, I, I see Republican governors being very quiet. Now, Mitch, what do you make of this? Uh, this Washington trip, is it going to hurt Donald Trump? Does it help him? Uh, I don't know. It just seems like every day some establishment Republican just can't warm up to him, if, even if they're cremated together. Um, I think it, it hurts Trump uh, to some extent uh, with the constant drip. Uh, obviously, the 50 uh, foreign policy folks came out at the time of his uh, uh, economic speech in Detroit to kind of mitigate that. Uh, you know, there are no accidents in politics like there are no accidents in life, I guess. I, I do think the constrip will hurt him. I applaud, you know, Senator Collins for having a conscience. I also have to say she's up for election in another swing state, New Hampshire. So, you know, I give her I give her points for courage, but, but I, I mitigate that by the fact that she's up in, in a swing state for her, you know, her own neck in 2016. I think, I think the drip does hurt because what it does is it takes establishment Republicans and say, more or less, you can't vote for Trump. Yeah. So either vote for Hillary or vote for one of the other candidates, but at least it's not a vote for Trump. And frankly, I think that's very smart because I think the Clinton campaign are right on the money about the temperament issue. You know, people have different positions and they change over the years, although yeah. Trump's position seems to change every five minutes. But, but temperament doesn't change. And the temperament we've seen from Donald Trump is so bad that it kind of, you know, vetoes any other any other aspect. I mean, this is a constant uh, talking point for Hillary Clinton on the stump about, uh, you know, telling the country we have to we're war be warning us about Donald Trump. Is that going to work? Is that I think it does, because I think you do have a very narrow, narrow sliver of the, of the electorate. A lot of people are very hardcore one way or the other, as we know. It's a split country, but there is a sliver. And her attempt is at, 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 at moderates. And I will tell you, and I'll make a prediction today, obviously months in advance, and we'll see how dopey I've looked later, which has happened. And that is, I say Clinton wins because suburban, moderate women, of which a fair portion of Republican will end up voting for Clinton because they are scared of the temperament of Donald Trump, the unpredictability, the lack of reliableness. Well, that kind of plays because she, uh, what you're saying, bears out in some red states already uh, where, uh, you know, Democrats in the past haven't had a chance. For instance, mm -hmm. Georgia, and which they haven't run since 92, and Utah. And in the far west, too. Yeah, and Utah. As I see what you're saying there. All right, I want to talk about Debbie Wasserman Schultz and uh, Canova. Boy, they're raising money. They both got about $3 billion. What's going to happen here? Is, is, the, is the exit from the DNC chair going to follow her into her district and cause problems for her in the primary on August 3rd? You know, I, I don't know if it did. It did immediately after. I'm not sure how much resonance it has by election day which is august 30th you know the democratic primary date down here mm -hmm. i think it may have juiced up his donations maybe it had a little bit of a chilling effect at that time but i just don't see that as an issue on election day how about grayson is he is he in, in trouble on the primary I think he is. I think, you know, Murphy's had a misstep or two, but, but Grayson's like a walking, uh, you know, disaster area, uh, you know, based on his divorce with his ex-wife, just different things. Mm -hmm. I just don't think he has his act together uh, at all. And the interesting thing is all polling I've seen, plus what I've seen on the street, um, you know, South Florida should be the best haven for someone like him and not Murphy, uh, because it's more liberal. Yet this is a huge part of Murphy's base in South Florida, not Grayson's. That's very counterintuitive. All right. What about Rick Scott, the governor, his voter suppression efforts? Is that uh, really a concern, uh, considering where the numbers are right now in Florida? I mean, it's always, always about turnout. But is, is Dade County going to be the key to the state? Well, I think South Florida will. Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. Yeah. Uh, you know, I call him the Darth Vader of politics. He's just, just acidic. Uh, 
uh, even to look at him, so I'm kind of prejudiced that way. But I, I will say that he is doing everything he can with the help of a lot of the Florida legislature uh, to to uh, depress the vote, to to block the vote. But I but I think ultimately that's going to become more difficult. And of course, he's you know the head of a pack for Donald Trump, so he, his motives are very clear. I think he may end up making. I think he's trying to make himself a more Republican advocate than Jeb Bush was for his brother in the recount of 2000, which I never thought would ever be possible. Mitch Caesar, always great to visit. Thanks, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ed. You bet. Former Florida Democratic Party chair and member of the DNC Executive Council, Mitch Caesar, with us here on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. I got more after this. Hey, folks, you've heard me talk about BioGreen Clean. I'm going to show you right now on my airplane just how tough this is. I want you to keep in mind, chemical-free, 100% plant-derived, biodegradable. It is the safest cleaner that you can get, and it's the most effective. Go to our website, wegotit.com, or go to biogreenclean.com, www.biogreenclean.com, and order today. We perpetuate a culture of crime all the way from Wall Street right down to the Main Street in our hometowns. It's worse than it has been since FDR took control of the problem and said we can't count on industry taking care of the American labor. They probably have already engaged into some type of criminal cover-up. And the law prohibits the government from even doing anything about it. Catch America's lawyer Mike Papantonio on YouTube at youtube.com slash goleftv. Tonight on the News with Ed, RT America, RT.com. You can check it out also on Dish and Direct. We're going to be talking about unions. 11%. That's the number. The workforce, the union workforce in this country now is at 11%. There has been an attack on uh, right to work issues in 26 states where they have passed right to work legislation. There is a national right to work act that's being supported by 29 senators and also 127 House members. Uh, this they want national legislation for right to work which of course depresses wages makes it harder to organize makes it harder to hold a vote in the workplace and also uh, affects the mandatory uh, dues contribution uh, in states that are not right to work so this is going to hurt the infrastructure of the democrats there's no question about it but what i find interesting is that there are a number and i've talked about this in the past there are a number of unions that are giving money to some of these candidates who were supporting this National Right to Work Act. Leo Gerard is going to join us tonight on TV to talk about this. The International Steelworkers are holding their convention in Las Vegas. He'll talk about exactly the attack on workers and also the concern that many union members, leaders, have got with their membership turning to Trump because he's hitting them on trade. He's hitting them on currency manipulation with China. Uh, he, he's hitting them on uh, the, the American patriotism thing. Can he be believed? And there are some hard-working white, roll-your-sleeves-up kind of workers in this country that are kind of nervous about Hillary Clinton. That subject tonight on the News with Ed. RTAmerica.com. RT.com, should I say. It's nice that I know the website, isn't it? We'll see you tomorrow. Ed Schultz, News and Commentary.